You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And welcome back. This is The Michael Lodge Show, and I'm Michael Lodge. So listen, I have been talking for quite some time now, for several months, well, almost six months, about confidence and the economic confidence and small business confidence and consumer confidence. And what we're seeing now, based upon what has happened since the November election, we're having an issue. And we need to talk about that issue just for a little bit because small businesses have lost confidence. And if there's any kind of indicator of where the economy is going to go, it's that confidence level in small businesses. So what I have seen is that the optimism of small business owners, it faded in November greatly. And that's according to a survey released on Tuesday by the National Federation of Independent Businesses. So the NFIB index of small business optimism fell 2.6 points to 101.4 in November, dragged down by lowered expectations for economic improvements in the near in the near future. That's a big difference to the reaction four years ago when the index jumped from 95 in October to 106 in December following the election of Donald Trump. Despite that decline, the index remains well over the 47-year historical average reading of 98. But small business owners are still facing major uncertainties, uh, including COVID-19 crisis and the upcoming Georgia runoff elections, which is uh, shaping how they're looking at the economic future. And let me tell you what that all means now. At this moment, the only thing that we know about Joe Biden's economic uh, program, or whatever he wants to call it, is that he's going to raise taxes. That's the only thing that we know. We don't know what he's going to do for the economy. We don't know what he's going to do on on uh, international trade deals. We don't we don't know anything because we haven't heard anything from him throughout the whole campaign except that he's going to raise taxes. Now the other issue that we have is what I've been talking about the last couple of weeks is this Georgia runoff. If the Democrats get control of the Senate, they have the ability to erase all of the tax programs that are currently available for small business and individuals that will be gone because they can push it through the Senate and they can raise those taxes. So we're sitting here at the moment not knowing what's going to happen because no one has told us. There's been no clear economic program put forth except to raise taxes. And Don, I mean, not Donald, but Joe Biden has already said, he's already said this time after time. We've seen it after reel after reel after clip after clip where he has said that if you vote for me, I'm going to raise your taxes. That's all that we know. We know nothing else. We were very clear what was going to happen with Trump. We knew he was going to renegotiate the trade deals. He was going to uh, uh, raise tariffs. He was going. To, we knew everything that was going to happen. So we were pretty confident in which direction we were going to go with our economic future. And it went very well. But we knew in ahead of time. At the moment, we don't know. We are in limbo. It was what they used to call four years ago or uh, six years, seven, eight years ago, when you used to sit around and talk around the table with small business, they were on pause because they didn't know what Obama was going to do at that time. There was no clear economic picture of what he had planned for the United States. And the same thing happens with Biden now. We have no idea 
in which direction he's going to go. So it's very important that you understand that this Georgia vote for those two senators and the Republicans controlling the Senate, it's very important. It's more important, that is important to all of the United States at the moment of what happens in Georgia. So Georgia, I'm talking directly to you, it's into your hands. Do our taxes go up or do we at least have until 2025 to have these tax breaks that we currently have? Or are you going to send the Democrats there and our taxes are going up? Our red tape to operate our businesses are going up? Our health care costs are going to go up? So it's up to you, Georgia. Whatever you're going to do, you had better think about America, not about your political party, but what is going to happen with America and our economics. So we're having right now an economic downturn. People, companies... <clears throat> Excuse me. Companies are beginning to pause again. Our unemployment numbers are stalled again. When companies don't know what the economic potential economic future is going to be, they begin to pause and they begin to pause on hiring people. No, listen, no stimulus package is going to pull business out of wherever they are at the moment, unless they're able to work and work without higher taxes and work without red tape and regulations. There are so much compliance issues. <coughs> Excuse me. There are so much compliant issues in trying to run a business anywhere in the United States at the moment. So... We're on pause once again. The economy's on pause. Businesses are starting to pull themselves and say, okay, i got to make some major decisions. In fact, individuals, you too, should be start making those same decisions. Start cutting back on your debt. Pay down your debt as quickly as you can. Do not put anything on your credit cards. Be- become a conservative financial person. Because... We don't have a clear picture of where we're going in the next few weeks. So we're in trouble. Well, not just a few weeks, but the next few months. But we are in trouble. Operate your personal lives and your personal finances conservatively. Businesses have to do the same. They're beginning to do that now. They're beginning to go on to a straight line and they're going to be on the straight line until they know exactly what's going to happen and what the economic plan for America is by Biden. If he's going to start building up these more international relationships with China and everything else, well, China is taking our jobs back. And I want to tell you right now, capital from Wall Street is moving out of the United States because they don't know what's going to happen with the economic outlook. They know that there's going to be higher taxes. So why keep your money here if there's going to be higher taxes? Why keep your jobs here if payroll taxes are going to go up? Income taxes are going to go up. (coughs) Why keep jobs here? So we're going to go through the same thing of what happened through uh, the late part of, of the Bush administration and all through the Obama administration, where jobs left because it was cheaper to operate out of the United States than it is in... It's it's cheaper to operate in other foreign countries than it is in the United States because of taxes and all of the other gibbical goop that comes along with a democratic presidency. We don't know what's going to happen. So we're in limbo. But big business, they're thinking ahead. They're thinking, okay, where am I going to put my money? Where am I going to put my people? Where am I going to do, develop my business where I can operate out of the wings of the United States because it's just too damn expensive to do it here? And I, 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 let's just take one state as an example <clears throat> because it's, it's horrifying what's happening to the state. <coughs> state of California. The way that they're operating at the moment with such high taxes, high fees, more regulatory issues, more compliance issues that small businesses have to do in the state of California. Companies have said, 
Enough. I'm going to a state where I can do it cheaper. So, where have they gone? They've gone to Arizona, non-tax state. They've gone to Florida, non-tax state. They've gone to Nevada, non-tax state. They've gone to Texas. The number one place to go out of California has been Texas. Non-tax state. Business-friendly state. They say in Texas, we want you to come here. We're happy that you come here. So HP leaves California. Tesla leaves California. 13,000 other businesses have left California because of the way that they run their, their state as a state that is anti-business and really almost anti-California because they don't care about Californians. All that they care about is their political power. That's it. Number one ends right there. The benefits of living in California are not there anymore. Unless you're homeless. Unless you're illegally there from another country. But if you're in business, it's no longer a viable place to really do business. So that's why people leave. And so if you look at the federal government, the same situation is beginning to happen. They're seeing small businesses, big businesses are seeing, okay, I don't think I can operate in the United States anymore because I don't know what the economic future is because we don't know what Biden's economic plan is because there is none at the moment except to raise taxes. Just those words of taxes scares business and they start moving. So, capital and cash are starting to leave the country. After after four years, we've had them pouring it back into the United States and getting good tax benefits. Now they have to leave again because those benefits are gone. Jobs are no longer going to be in the United States, so everyone's going to be on pause. It's going to be a straight line. It may even go downward greatly based upon what Joe Biden does if he ever announces what his economic plan is. Confidence is a big thing. If small business doesn't have the confidence, if consumers are beginning to see, okay, maybe we don't have the confidence that we used to have, because now we're hearing that jobs are slowing down. People are not getting hired back for those same jobs. Companies are beginning to look at other countries to do business in that are more business friendly, less costly to operate in. If we do not have confidence in small business, because small business is a big indicator of where this country is going, and if they don't have confidence in the government, in the tax system, in the business environment. Remember, it comes from the top, and that's at the president's level. If he doesn't have a plan except to raise taxes, we don't know what to do because we don't know how we're going to get hit in the near future. And if the Senate falls to the Democrats, those higher taxes are going to come very quickly. I can guarantee it because that was the promise that Biden had said he's going to do. Now, if we have a if we have a Republican led Senate, we can stop all those higher taxes. So that's why it's in Georgia's court. I mean, if they elect two Democrats, all of us are going to get hit hard. You may not think it, but everyone in America is going to get hit hard because the Democrats have promised to us that our taxes are going to go up. So how does the business have confidence? The only way that they have confidence is if an administration is pro-business, pro-jobs, pro pro having the, the ability to believe in business that they're going to produce more, that they can do produce more. But right now, we don't know. So we're seeing that the economy is changing very quickly 
in front of our eyes. With this, with this COVID thing, with the lockdowns, with the higher taxes and everything else, expect small business not to have the confidence that they used to have. A few months ago, <clears throat> we knew what the financial direction that the country was going in. So the American people were very confident. Confident, I mean. Businesses were very confident. We knew that <clears throat> Trump was working on another tax cut, on payroll taxes. So we knew that we had a president who was really pro-business, not pro-government. But now we have a go- we have a president who is pro-government, but anti-business. Now, you Democrats are out there, you're going to start calling me names and everything else. I don't care. I'm speaking the truth. And this comes from the heart because I care about small business in the United States. I hated to see the the video this week of the the lady who owned a restaurant in California. And it's being locked down once again by Governor Newsom. Worst governor in the state of in the state history of California. Because she owns a restaurant. She has outdoor seating. Seating is set up per CDC and health guidelines. She was told to shut down. So her outdoor seating was still there. But if you look across the street, there's a movie production company in there with their lunch and canteen program sitting out there. It looked exactly how like how she had hers, but they were able to keep going, to keep running, But she was shut down. That small business needs more help than that production company. That production company gets tax credits from the state of California to produce their movies there. The small businesswoman doesn't get anything. She doesn't get any kind of help from the state of California or from the federal government. But that production company gets tax credits, called film tax credits, and every year the state assembly and senate pass these tax credits. They raise them up every year, so now it's worth, I don't know how much, millions and millions of dollars. And they get them if they film their production in the United States, and they apply for them. This poor businesswoman who owns the restaurant gets nothing. Confidence. Key word here. Because it kind of tells us in which direction the economy is going based upon the confidence of small business and confidence of the American consumer. So we're going to have to watch this very very carefully. That's why I've told you in my, in my first, in my first uh, podcast today, I asked you as on the personal level, put your business, put your personal financial plans in action on paper, but act very conservative on how you're using and spending your money. Because we don't know what's going to happen with COVID. We don't know what's going to happen with lockdowns. We don't know what's going to happen with tax, uh, in- income taxes over the next few years under Biden, except we know they're going up. <clears throat> Be conservative because the confidence is going to fall based upon what we don't know. And that's the problem. We don't know. But if you plan ahead and if you and if you look at your personal finances and you know what your revenues may be coming in, you know what your expenses are because that's constant every month. And you look at your budget and you take into consideration what on my budget is the most highest priority. My housing, my utilities, my food, my family. Those four things. Everything else gets put on hold. But as long as you can maintain your household and live conservatively, you will be okay. And that's what I'm asking individuals to do. 
really focus on your 2021 personal budget and spending because it's going to count. It is going to count. Small businesses, remain conservative. Do the same thing. Sit down. You have a half a month to do it in now. To sit down and begin planning for 2021. Look at your income streams, your expenses. What can you cut out? What are the items that you need to continue on in business? We have to think differently now. We are in a situation where we are in limbo. And since we do not know in which direction the Biden administration is going in the economy, is he going to build the economy or is he going to tear down the economy? Is he going to present plans that are going to be so taxing and so burdensome that it doesn't make sense? Or is he going to present ideas that are common sense that will help the American people? Unfortunately, I, I believe it's going to be the first. Here we go. Here we go. 2021 right around the corner. Small business confidence is... Is shrinking. But we got to keep going. And so that means that you and I, we have got to do really good planning. We have got to be really good stewards of our money. If we're in business or even in our personal lives, we have got to be good stewards. And that will be the word for 2021. Are you a good steward? This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Listen, if you want to send me a text or an email... Send me a text at 818-252-5682, an email at info at lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com, and I'll try and answer anything that you send me. (coughs) (coughs) Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. But listen, if you want to know what I do in my day job, go to lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com, my website. If you want a free (coughs) budget tool, It's there on my website. Just click on 60-minute business advice, and it's there. You'll see a button that says uh, personal uh, budgeting. Click on that, and you can download. It's in Excel, and you can change it. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's a good start for you to put in your budget for 2020. You know what your income is, what your expenses are going to be, And then you can also measure it by the actual expense that you spend in that month. I have them all below January, February, March, all the way through December. So you have one for each month. See what you can do. And then at the very end, there is a total, the yearly total, so you can kind of see what you're doing as the year goes by. It's a simple tool. I suggest that you download it. It's free. And begin setting your budget together, okay? I want you all to succeed. I want you all to be conservatives when it comes to finance. And I want you to build your confidence up in your ability to manage your own finances, your family finances, and your business finances. You have that ability. Get to it. 2021 will be the year of us taking responsibility for what we do. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. God bless. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye.